Amira, thank you so much. <laughs> Let me start by, how are you now? I am great now. And I, it, I'm like revisiting, like I kind of, I feel like I, I hid this away for years, so that was like very emotional for me. But I, I'm great now. My two year checkup is in July, and I'm doing well, so very excited. <laughs> You know, your story and the reason why you're here and discussing it and the reason why you wrote about it is not to make people afraid, right? This is not about making women feel afraid. This is about empowering women yeah. so that you don't linger and suffer and that you feel empowered to keep pushing for answers about our health. Mm -hmm. You talk about, and, and it just, I knew that something was wrong. It was easy to see. I just couldn't understand why my doctor couldn't see it. You saw three ear, nose, and throat specialists, mm -hmm. two neurologists, yep. and had an MRI. Mm -hmm. After all that, they were still saying it's allergies. 100%. 100%. And I think, I think what I struggled with was, uh, from the beginning, like I knew something was off with my body, but the first doctor saying it was allergies, I believed it for a second because they're a doctor. Right. You know? You trust doctors right away. But I was also like, I was like, at the time I was 25, and I was like, I know what a cold feels like, though. I know how my body handles allergies, and I know something's off with it, and I don't understand why you won't take me seriously. What made you feel that you weren't being taken seriously? Because, you know, they say medicine is a process of elimination. Mm -hmm. You come in with some symptoms. They say, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. But this was deeper to you. Yes. You felt not heard. Yes. What, what, what caused that feeling? It was the immediate answer that it was allergies. I went in multiple times and every doctor that I went to from my PCP to the ENTs to the first few neurologists, it was right away. Without checking anything else or even hearing my concerns, it was like, oh, it's allergies. And then I went over how my body handled allergies in the past and why it was so different. And there was no follow-up there. It was immediately dismissed. So when the turning point for me was when the fluid started to leak because I was like, that's not mucus. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm grown. Like, that's, that's not mucus. Right. It felt like contact solution, like cold contact solution. Oh. And I thought it was so weird that it was only coming out of one side of my nose. Right. And still, allergies. And I was like, something's wrong here. When you found the article mm -hmm. with the person having the same symptoms, yep. I mean, that's almost like you were self-diagnosing. And you were right, but still not heard. 100%. And I, I think that's the most frustrating part, because I... I literally printed out the article and took it with me to every appointment. Right. And I don't know what it was about that article, but I, I knew that's what was happening mm. to me. It was the way he described it leaking like a faucet. Yeah. And like, it, it happened at very random times. I would yeah. be in meetings on the subway, speaking to family members, uh. just down my nose. And it, I was like, this is not how allergies happen. Right. And yeah. I, I knew right away. You know, it's so interesting because obviously, it, it, it's obvious that not all doctors guess. Yes. We, we know that. In fact, when I had my mother's situation, mm -hmm. it was another doctor, Carmen Hollowell, my bestie, that yeah. I called <laughs> and said, Carmen, this isn't right. And then someone else referred me to another doctor, female doctor here in New York, who helped my mom. So we, we get it. We know this is, let me be clear, not all doctors. 100%. But this yeah. is a big enough problem. And it's documented enough with women yep. and people of color that we know it exists. Welcome back to Camp, and we're continuing our conversation with women who say that their symptoms were not taken seriously by doctors. And we've been speaking with Amira Lee Wally, who says her symptoms were dismissed by multiple doctors as allergies, when in fact she had fluid leaking from her brain. In October 2020, she wrote an article for the LA Times discussing her experience with medical gaslighting. When you wrote that article, you said so many people responded. Yes. So many stories. Yes. I, as soon as it... As soon as it hit, um, as soon as it was released, dozens of DMs, people found my emails, people found my Facebook, my LinkedIn, different ways to contact me because they were either going through something similar or um, needed resources to figure out what else was happening. Was it, were you surprised by the response? I, I was surprised by how many people had the exact same thing. I was surprised by how many people needed the next step, which is finding the proper neurosurgeon and neurologist. And for me, like, I, I knew the steps finally, mm -hmm. and I knew what tests you needed so that they couldn't doubt you anymore. Wow. So it was the best way, like, tons of DMs. But I was very happy because that's the point. That's the only reason why I wrote it. I wrote it because I 
100% believe I am here yeah. because that man shared his story and I found it on Twitter at 2 a.m. <sighs> 2 a.m. in the morning. At 2 a.m. on Twitter and I said, mm. that's what happened to me. And I just wanted other people to be able to move forward. The surgery though, it's unimaginable. They ended up having to drill a hole into your skull. Yeah. Um, you said, of course, it was the most challenging experience of your life. But prior to the surgery, you went back to your original doctor. Yes. To have the conversation. Yes. I'm all ears. <laughs> so, what's funny about this is I really never wanted to see her again. I, I know my. And it was a female doctor. So again, this doctor. is what I'm talking about. There are layers to this. We're yes. talking about women not being heard, but sometimes the people who aren't listening are also women. Yes, yes. And I, I vowed to never see her again. But when you go into big surgery, you need clearance, mm. and it's advised to get clearance from someone who has seen your medical records before. So my neurosurgeon said to go back to her, and I had one last conversation with her. I walk in, and she's like, "Well, what do you need? What do you need surgical clearance for?" And I said. I had a CSF leak that I had mentioned for the past two years with you. I finally have a surgeon who found it, and we're going to fix the problem. Will you help me with clearance? And she just looked at me and was silent for about 10 seconds, and I was like, okay, and never addressed that she was wrong for so many years. And I promised myself I wouldn't get lost in anger, so I didn't confront it. I, like, I just wanted to get healthy and have a surgery, so that's what my mind is, so I moved forward. Mm -hmm. But at the end of my appointment, she asked me who my surgeon was. And I said his name, and she looked at me, and she was like, he's such a good doctor. And I was like, I know, he's such a good doctor for finally finding this wow. and finally listening to me.